Paul Dong joins me now from Beijing. He's a co-founder and sports industry observer at EI Asia Limited, as well as a sports and culture commentator here at CGTN. Paul, great to see you. Hi, Elaine. Well, we've been talking about for weeks about this Olympic bubble. Describe the COVID situation inside the Olympic villages, especially with all of the athletes' arrivals right now and in the next few days. Any challenges or concerns in the days ahead? Well, I believe that, you know, for people like me who stay outside of the so-called closed loop or, or also called bubble outside of China, I think uh, we are very concerned about the well-being of our staff as well as the international athletes and participants in the games inside the loop. Although we cannot tell exactly 100% what's going on there, so we depend so much on the press releases uh, by the IOC and by the organizing committee on a daily basis. We understand that there are cases, so far positive cases of, for COVID, uh, with the uh, arrive, arriving and arri those who have arrived uh, in the loop. But so far, I think the, the figures are, uh, are still within 100 uh, cumulatively. And uh, yeah, I think everybody, especially those host uh, staff, have already been well trained and are on very high alert, but they still will keep doing what they are supposed to do. We know there is always a lot of excitement around the Olympics. What is happening behind the scenes? What is the mood there around Beijing? And what are the big priorities right now? Well, I, I think uh, people now have to, because of the complexities of the COVID situation, which has uh, obviously been uh, stretching longer than many people had expected uh, from Tokyo and on, but we have to live with it. We have to accept the reality because people around me, especially native Beijing people, had been for some time very enthusiastic about ticketing, about buying a ticket, uh, no matter what. They, if as long as they are allowed to to enter into the stadiums and those venues, but now they have to abide by the new regulations and uh, count on those uh, who have been carefully selected and chosen to be among the audiences. Uh, sitting inside, but people, uh, I mean, other people who will not have act, direct access to the venues will, you know, still cheer um, online and by watching television. I, th I think the, the enthusiasm remains very, very high and strong, especially during this cold winter time when people don't necessarily have too many other, you know, arrangements on their agenda. So I, I still believe that the Winter Olympics remains the biggest magnet of attraction for people in Beijing and also around China. Paul, you mentioned tickets. Let's look at the Olympic economy in this pandemic era. Um, there are also no foreign audiences. That's been decided for quite some time. No public tickets for the locals. Is there any concern about the lack of money being pumped into the local economy by fans from not just there, but around the world? Well, I, I, I agree that I think the, situ the situation with Beijing is in becoming very, very similar to that of Tokyo a half year ago. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's a pity. And uh, if the situation allows us to have audiences of visitors and spectators, of course, financially, I mean, the immediate result of the finances of the Olympic Games would look much better. But if you look at the overall picture with China, the very reason that Beijing decided to bid for the game seven years ago, I think it was a much, much bigger and broader picture rather than a single project of several weeks that you will gauge and also evaluate the financial outcome of the game based on just a few weeks or a few years of preparations and operations. But for China, uh, it's different from uh, you know, hosting the games for some more developed countries in Europe or North America, that the Winter Games will be like a culminated, you know, a climax or even a finale of many, many decades of development of winter sports. But for China, the Winter Games are a beginning. And you should look beyond the Winter Games to many years or even decades ahead for the entire industry and businesses and also social changes the changes to lifestyles for the Chinese people, hundreds of millions of them, 
in the decades ahead. And then this is, this is only the beginning, and this is only a show that uh, we will try to put together successfully. But in the years ahead, it will help us generate more financial income and industrial development and also, as well as social development.